We yeah, we um we want to thank you. Come here. Don't don't sit on the bed or nothing. No homo. No, just just don't get close to the bed. Don't get close. But it's just like yo, we want to thank you for hosting the thing, man. Man, you, you, it's been a pleasure. You didn't have to do it. And you did. No, no, no. I definitely didn't have to do it. I, I definitely didn't have to. Uh, first and foremost, I'm not getting the bed. Uh, you know, shout out to him and what he did. I'm just gonna. If we can, just let's let's just put the camera a little this way, just so we're not. I don't want my shot to even like. I don't want it to come close to the bed at all. I should look like he fresh off the goddamn plane. I should, I should, I should. Fresh off the guard stage. That's my brother right here from day one. We used to wake up and, I mean, damn, pause, but like, check this out. I mean, I mean, back in the days when he was like 10 and I was a little bit older, his older brother, we used to fight over the, over the Frosted Flakes, you know what I'm saying, before pause was invented. You know what I'm saying? But it's my brother for real. We used to actually wrestle off of the... All for the frosted flakes because he used to always get up early. Yo, what the fuck did Puff just say? say? Nobody's gonna acknowledge this for me. Puff just said we used to wrestle over the frosted flakes and we're streaming live. That was stupid. Listen, that was fucking stupid. Listen. One notable aspect of this controversy is the apparent distancing of celebrities from Diddy, particularly in light of Cassie's lawsuit against him. Many speculate that these celebrities are not speaking out against Diddy's alleged actions because they fear becoming targets themselves. The suggestion that Diddy may possess incriminating footage of various individuals adds another layer of intrigue to the situation. You made a comment, right, saying that you knew someone that went through Jimmy Hitchman proffer agreement for a drug case. And the proffer agreement revealed that Jimmy Hitchman, he could have walked away if he would have given up Diddy. What she mean by that? Well, what happened was is that they had nine different sections with Jimmy Hitchman regarding his, his proffer agreement. So that means the feds went in there nine different times to talk to him. And in those, in those sessions, they asked him, what do you know about Sean Puffy Combs or Sean Diddy Combs I don't think it was Puffy at that time. It wasn't Diddy at the time. But what do you know about Sean John Puffy Cone having sex with underage boy? And you got to realize, and, and people never think, think about this, that Jimmy and his brother, I think they had the same charges. But his brother walked away from that and Jimmy gets life without the possibility of parole, I think. Which is crazy. For any drug charge. Nobody should spend their life in jail for drug charges. And just drug charge. But I think he, they try to tie him to some murders or something like that. I don't I don't know. I don't know that to be for sure. But he shouldn't spend his life in, in, in jail for no drug charges. Not at all. So, but they was going to let him walk. If he would probably had to, uh, for that proper agreement, they probably let him walk. If he had any information regarding Puff having sex with underage boys. That the feds asked him. In 2011, In 2011, brother. So what did the feds know? Because the feds not coming there unless somebody made a report or somebody made some allegations against Puff in 2011 to ask a friend of him, his, Jimmy Hinchman, what do you know about that? But for them to ask him about that, it had to be more than a rumor. Somebody made a complaint somewhere. And it got, the feds got hold to that complaint. Now they're going to investigate that complaint when they get people under the barrel. Like they had Jimmy Hinch. That's why they asked him. If he did know information, right, why do you think he didn't tell the leaked the footage and subsequent discussions have prompted reflections on power dynamics within the music industry.
It is suggested that individuals like Diddy wield significant influence, making it difficult for others to refuse his requests or say no to his demands. The possibility that Diddy may use such footage for blackmail purposes raises concerns about ethical conduct and privacy rights. I moved to New York City. And I lived with Sean Puffy Combs for a year. That's the crazy thing. Now, that yeah. was L.A. Reid's idea, right? We're sending New you over York to City. something called Puffy Flavor Camp. There you go. To learn <laughs> some... Flavor Camp. Yeah, Flavor that's camp. what it was called. And you're going to go to Puff Daddy's. He's In pre- the 90s. Do you understand what that's like? Puffy's place was like just filled with chicks and orging like nonstop, right? No, not really. Come I mean, on. but did I, hey, it was curious. I got a chance to see some things. Yeah, but you were 13. What were you I seeing? I went there to see the lifestyle. Right. And, and I saw it. And it was and it was but I don't know if I could indulge and understand what I was even looking at. It was it was pretty wild. It was, so nobody it was tried to you know, some woman didn't come along. I didn't and say that. Okay. I, I didn't but say you that. Didn't. <laughs> what I did say is that there were very curious things taking place. Uh huh. And I didn't necessarily understand it. Uh huh. Biggie Smalls was there. Biggie Smalls was there, Lil' Kim, Craig Mack. All know, these people all are hanging these, around. All, yeah, man, Faith Evans. Jodeci, Mary okay? J. Blosh. They ain't know nothing about this shit. Oh. <laughs> I was having a good time. You know what I mean? Does he have you doing any chores? Are you doing dishes at all? I mean, to keep you humble somewhat? Or are you just like, can you stay up till four in the morning with them and party? I mean, I could. I yeah. actually stayed up longer than them. <laughs> and, I, and, I what, and do you have money? What's <laughs> going on? I mean, I had like per diem. Yeah. Uh-huh. I, had, I had like, you know, what like a, a living. life. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. 14 years old. You're a dad now. Would you ever send your kid to Puffy Camp? Hell no. <laughs> See? Furthermore, the leaked footage has brought attention to allegations of sexual misconduct within Hollywood, with Diddy being the target of multiple sexual assault lawsuits. There's a growing focus on uncovering evidence to support these claims. The involvement of law enforcement agencies and the prospect of video evidence being used in legal proceedings underscore the seriousness of the situation. Checking out one of your lies, right? And you made a comment and you said that you rather be poor than be Diddy Rich. Can you elaborate on that? Bruh, I told this to this one guy the other day. I'd rather have a slow nickel than a fast dollar any day. My slow nickel put bread on my table. My slow nickel pays my mortgage. My slow nickel brings me home to my family. My slow nickel builds a community. We see what the fast dollar does. Being Diddy Rich takes a guy that once name was Puffy that after every tragedy he had in his life, he had to change his name, Puffy. Puff Daddy, Diddy, Brother Love, Love. Puffy from the DC tragedy went to when those kids was trampled over. I think one or two kids died at a function in DC that he gave. Puffy. City College. Puff Daddy. Diddy. I mean, uh, Biggie. He comes named to Diddy. And now the allegations with Cassie and everything, he went from brother love to love. Being Diddy rich, have you thinking you something that you're not? that you greater than what you supposed to be and the people around you. When I say I'd rather be my poor with my peace of mind, with my own thoughts, my own community, my own love, with my family, then it'd be so rich that I'm thinking I'm something that I'm not. That's what they do, bro. Look how many times. <laughs> Who was that? You ever go to a club? It's a big shootout, and it was it was the Mirage, and then you come back two weeks later, 
recognize the zone. <laughs> they change their name after every shootout. <laughs> That's what happens. Kevin Hart's presence in the leaked footage adds another dimension to the controversy. His past indiscretions and infidelity have been publicly scrutinized, and the leaked footage reignites discussions about his personal life and choices. Hart's public apologies and attempts to reconcile with his family are contrasted with the absence of similar gestures towards his ex-wife, Tori. The leaked footage offers glimpses into the lavish lifestyle and questionable activities that occur at Diddy's gatherings. Allegations of drug use, underage drinking, and non-consensual behavior raise troubling questions about the culture surrounding these events. The involvement of minors and the use of coercion to maintain secrecy further highlight the potential dangers associated with such gatherings. As the controversy surrounding the leaked CCV footage continues to unfold, it's crucial to delve deeper into the broader implications and potential consequences for all parties involved. The scrutiny surrounding Diddy's gatherings has shown a spotlight on the darker side of the entertainment industry, prompting discussions about accountability, transparency, and the protection of vulnerable individuals. The leaked footage raises concerns about the safety and well-being of minors who may have been present at Diddy's gatherings. The allegations of underage drinking and potential exposure to harmful substances underscore the urgent need for stronger safeguards to protect young individuals from exploitation and harm. Jada Pinkett and Will Smith, you told me before that you was at a party before that they attended and you said the party was weird. Tell me about that. Okay, uh, this is Boxer. His name is Twan. He's from our neighborhood. He, he was married to uh, Tanisha Arnold. So the bra played Pam on uh, Martin Lawrence. We went to the party with her. I mean, it was a matter of fact, it was a set it off party. Jada Pickett, Biblical Pops, all of them was there. You know what I'm saying? It was just, uh, seemed like Puff and Tupac was like a couple, seemed like to me. Uh, it was just a lot of weird shit going on, you know what I'm saying? The vibes ain't there. I guess that, that's what Tupac was talking about, the Illuminati and shit. It's like Biblical Fox was with this big gay man. He was 6'9". They called him, his name 6'9". He had the red hair with a big old booty and shit. Nobody was gay no more. What the fuck is going on here? It's just a lot of, a lot of weird shit, dude. You know what I'm saying? That shit, it ain't right. You know what I'm saying? I guess that's what Tupac, I guess he wanted to get up out of the Illuminati or something. But I, I seen her yeah, that matter of fact, MC Light pulled off with Tanisha Arnold. You know what I'm saying? In her brand new 560, black one. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that shit weird, dude. Yeah, that's some weird ass shit going on, you know? Yeah. And what was Tupac doing at the party, yo? Him and Puff was there together. They was there, you know what I'm saying? That's why I don't know how they fucking fell out or nothing like that. They was road dogs, you know what I'm saying? He ain't even got pictures of him. He got on that uh, uh, that blue sweater with the turtleneck. Him and him hugged up like this with the black hat. Have you ever seen that picture? Nah, I don't recall, but I'm pretty sure I came across it. Yeah, 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 yeah. That picture there, that they was at that party that day. Yeah, that's just like a bunch of weird shit, that whole fucking, yeah, that shit weird, dude. Yeah, bunch of, uh, it ain't right. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I'm not no gay bash or nothing. I mean, you know, none of that shit, but that shit ain't right. You know what I'm saying? That shit, that whole party was weird old out. Yeah, and it was Jaden Pickett. But. You saying that, you saying the whole party was weird. What did you see at the party that made it weird? I mean, I'm confused. I guess it was the Illuminati. It's just weird. I know I wouldn't want to be part of no shit like that. You know what I'm saying? You know, I'm from the old school, dude, and uh, that shit wasn't really tolerated with my generation. You know what I'm saying? The involvement of high-profile celebrities like Kevin Hart adds another layer of complexity to the controversy. Hart's past indiscretions and public apologies have been widely scrutinized, and the leaked footage reignites discussions about his personal conduct and moral responsibility. The juxtaposition of Hart's public persona with his alleged involvement in Diddy's events raises questions about authenticity and accountability in the public eye. I hate crime, yes, but it's more tolerated these days and nothing like that. It's more, you know what I'm saying, more open now, you know what I'm saying? But back then it was kind of fishy, you know what I'm saying? Still kind of fishy. 
you know, but it's more, you know, out there now. The incident y'all had with Warren G and Kid Frost. Tell me about that, my man. Okay, Kid Frost had gave a, a party at the House of Blues. One of our big homeboys wanted to go with us. You know what I'm saying? So he went with us and we, he said, ooh, you young know niggas have fun. So one of uh, Kid Frost homies still on my big homie. But he didn't know that he was around, uh, it was maybe about 20 of us. So we, the dude that uh, socked my big homie, we beat the dog shit out of him. So my big homie, he came too. He, uh, he like, that's the motherfucker? We like, yeah. And it was two security guards had him. Had, uh, had the dude that we beat up from Kid Frost entourage. So uh, my big homie knocked that motherfucker out while the yellow jacket, you know, the yellow jackets with the event security, they had the dude. So my homie still knocking him out. Boom! So the, the dude with the uh, yellow jacket was talking shit. Man, what the fuck is wrong with him? My homeboy knocked out him too. Bam! Like, ooh! So the other one like, man, he got back. Little Jamaican dude come up talking shit. Man, are you going crazy? My homeboy sock him too. So we went down to get our car for valet. And it was the dude, it's LBC. And he like, what the fuck is that? And he's like, it's Long Beach City Crip. So my homeboy knew this dude was an imposter. He, if you're from Long Beach, you're going to say Rolling Twenties or Insane. You know what I'm saying? You're going to say you're a real uh, block boy. You know what I'm saying? 19th Street. You're going to say something. A real Crip. So this nigga said he's from Long Beach City Crip. My homeboy like, wait a minute. And knocked him out too. So uh, Warren G and them was down there. Him and Cedric Ballas waiting on their cars. And they, I get, they seen my homeboy get busy like that. So they, so uh, they had left before us. Went up to Fat Burgers. So we came, got in our shit. They finally brought our cars to valet. We went up to Fat Burgers. And Warren G and so Cedric Ballas was up there already. You know, eating their shit and shit. So we came in there, the big homie like, uh, hey, motherfucker. He pointed at Cedric Ballas, like, man, you've been dumping us for years. I'm losing all my motherfucking money betting on your motherfucking ass. So uh, Warren G was right there. He like, my homie like, man, that's a nice ass watch. So uh, he like, uh, man, let me try that on. You know what I'm saying? Moreover, the leaked footage has prompted broader conversations about power dynamics and privilege within the entertainment industry. The perception that individuals like Diddy wield immense influence and can act with impunity raises concerns about accountability and transparency. It also highlights the need for greater scrutiny and oversight to ensure that those in positions of power are held accountable for their actions. In response to the controversy, there have been calls for greater transparency and accountability within the entertainment industry. Advocates argue that meaningful change can only occur through systemic reforms. You look at everything that Diddy is going through right now. Do you think he can recover? No, I don't think so. I think when you have a reputation of, of when you have a bad reputation of doing dirty sh and weirdo sh, it just follows you to where you can't live it down. Uh, it's different between some normal sh. You know, he got caught cheating. He got caught stealing some money. Uh, he got, you know what I'm saying? Murderers live down sh You get me? When you do weirdo sh and sexual sh and and young females and and dudes and 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 that weirdo life follows you a long way. You get me? Because who wants who wants to be associated with that lifestyle? And you get that shit will follow you like a mother like you said, like a like a pedophile, like a mother who has to register as a sex offender. You get me? You kill you kill a motherfucker before you go play with somebody's young daughter or young son and be able to live that shit down. You get me? It's going to always bring a negative stain on you because people are always going to look at you in a different way. You get me? Situations where people get killed or, you know, motherfuckers robbing banks or stealing money or exploiting or whatever, whatever. 
it seems like certain situations when you do bad shit, sometimes um, there are situations to where people can understand. You get me? Or I understood why he was selling dope or, uh, you know, I don't approve of it, but I understand why Nick had to kill a motherfucker or that type of situation. Uh, you touching on your females or doing weird shit with kids or, or, or taking advantage of people's situations by, you know, sexual favors or dumb shit. Like, man, I should follow you. Nobody weird. Weirdo motherfuckers is, 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 is in a different element. You get me? That's just like, like I said, with people who deal with children and pedophiles and shit. You look that as a different motherfucker. You look that as a different beast when you, when you, when you get that tag put on you. I don't think nobody wants to. I don't give a fuck how long it is. People just don't want to be affiliated with that type of lifestyle. Yeah, that's real talk. You can't recover from you can't recover from that shit, man. You can't. You just you just can't. That that's just a no no. I don't give. It's a lot of shit you shouldn't do, but that's the top, man. Can't. The unfolding saga surrounding the leaked CCTV footage of Kevin Hart attending Diddy's freak offs continues to captivate public attention and ignite discussions about power dynamics, accountability, and ethical conduct within the entertainment industry. As the investigation deepens and new revelations come to light, it's essential to delve further into the complexities of this controversy and its broader implications. One aspect that warrants further examination is the role of complicity and silence among industry insiders. The reluctance of celebrities to speak out against Diddy despite allegations of misconduct speaks volumes about the pervasive culture of fear and intimidation that exists within elite social circles. The fear of retribution or damage to one's career often leads individuals to remain silent in the face of wrongdoing, perpetuating a cycle of impunity and enabling abusive behavior to continue unchecked. Moreover, the leaked footage has raised important questions about the ethical responsibilities of artists and influencers. Be no weird sex of uh, exploiting motherfucker. You, you weird. You get me? You just weird. Yeah, that's real talk. You made a good point. Once you got that tag on you, it's hard to get it off. You can't lay that down, man. Come on, man. You can go to prison right now for killing a nigga. And 10 years from now, muff come home. The nigga going to be like, yeah, man, I, they're going to embrace you. Now, it's going to be some skeptical shit to it, but they going to still embrace you when you come home, man. I get it. You did your time. I don't know. Gang shit. A motherfucker might have killed your homie, your family member, or whatever. Come on, man. You motherfucking sexually exploited some kids or had a had, had your girlfriend fucking other people while you film them and all other kind of shit. That's weird shit. No, nobody want to be associated with that. Nobody. Like, that nigga's weird. And then when you find out some motherfucker you knew, you really want to distance yourself. I don't want to be guilty by association with that shit. So them ties, them ties have to be cut. And I don't give a fuck who you are as far as money or status or whatever. You basically going to be basically by yourself. It's going to be hard to live that down, especially when you have a name and reputation. You'll never be able to live it down because people going to know you forever and they going to know what you did. Whatever, whatever it is that you did, you get if those people who were close to you know what was going down. And it's hard guilty by association because anybody who called themselves a friend or a close associate is going to be looked at differently now when it come to him. You can't be like, you can't be like, yeah, man, that was, that was Diddy's friend right there. That was his homie. You know, they hung out all the time. Nick gonna be looking at you like, oh, you definitely know shit. You definitely know what that Nick was doing. Now you looked upon weird because you was actually hanging with that motherfucker knowing what was going on. So how weird are you? That is one situation where guilty by association is going to you up because just by you being like yeah that was his real friend like that was his homie like you know they they was always kicking it together you know a gang of hidden secrets and shit. now people gonna frown upon you because you knew all this weirdo shit was going on 
And I, you know, I don't know. Are you loyal to a nigga? Because f- that loyalty sh- when you see that, f- that weirdo sh- going on. Especially the motherfuckers who can't help themselves because of the positions they're in. Like you said, when a nigga got power, nigga, he... Yeah. <laughs> What's going on, my brother? How you oh, man, man. man. Yo, it's Groove here? Happy birthday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Happy birthday, yeah, birthday to you. Woo! Happy birthday to you. Woo! Happy birthday to Fabulous. <laughs> the only nigga that got the name that I want. <laughs> <laughs> Thank get. Happy birthday to you. Thank you, my brother. Um, yeah. Let's take a shot for that, boy. Hold on, my mouth a little dry. Let me drink some more. Okay, skin. But, um... No, it's, it's your show today, Jack. Yeah. No, the, the one thing I've been no, 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 you got questions. Groove, 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 Come here, Groove, Groove. Yeah, Fab. Fab told me the floor, you fit. Hey, yo, Rastafari, Rastafari. Hey, hey, yo. Fab walked in. Don't do that. Yeah, that's what I said. That's what I said. No, we was talking about that. That's why I said I gotta pick it up from right there. No. This like this why I gotta pick it up from right there. Look at it, nigga. Fab, pick it up. Fab, nigga. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, 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 bro. Okay, kill him. Bro, bro, bro. No, no, no. Come tell the story. Bro, so bro, 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 we intoxicated. Listen, listen, listen. listen. Oh, bro, oh, bro, bro you help me build that yo, beautiful, bro, nice bro, guy, Rastafari brand of yours, huh? Yeah. I, I come see in, you, man. I'm walking in at that hallway, hallway right there. Bag at. Mr. Lee, yeah, I love this drink. Where you put my bag? You? I like at? when you like this, Daddy. Yeah, yeah, where you put my bag? Daddy, at, I like Mr. when you when oh, you right scrambling right and here. scraping for no, 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 shit. No, 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 I, got I notes like and that. Shit. You know, I'll be practicing. I got yeah, there you go. Shit. Got your notes. Okay, yeah, I'm not gonna go over with that one. Make a that wish. One? Just oh, blow it out. It's your no, birthday no. every day. Every day is your birthday on Drink okay. Champs. Goddammit, <laughs> I'm in. Okay. We ain't fucking with that. I got notes now. I'm trying to get my life together. <laughs> I want to taste the vegan Yo, Fendi, what's going on? No, but me and you ain't never really part. Just see where I look, you look back me? on where I became. Mm. Did you miss me, though? Mm. For real, because we, I'm I saying, miss, it seems like a thing. I miss it's his partying birthday with party. Puff, man. Man, I miss but partying I'm talking about for your birthday. Huh? Why won't you party with me for your birthday? Segwaying into the Drink Champs interview. <laughs> when you was with Nori and Fab and Jada and mm-hmm. everybody, they made a compilation video of you because they said you were sounding real suspect mm. on, the, on the interview. Yeah. Did you see that? Of course nah. I didn't see it. Nah, I didn't see it. You didn't see it? I swear to God. Uh, Come yeah. on, man. You saw hey, that on World hey, Star hey, and hey, on yo, the check, check, check this out. When they started playing the game, the pause game, I would definitely... That came from Harlem, too, by Yeah, the way. came from Harlem. I definitely would say some, oh, my, whoa. The crowd would be like, whoa, did he just say that? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I don't play games. Y'all know. You know what I'm saying? I'm a grown man. I don't play games. But um, yeah, Did the you compilation. Nah, I was, I was coming off of being in Miami a night of party, and I don't really remember what I was saying. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Would you like a reminder? Yeah, sure. Play some. Play, play, hey, yo, this is, yo, I, I love it all. I love it all, man. I yeah. like when you like this, Daddy. Yeah, yeah, where you put my bag Daddy, yeah, I like when you when oh, you right scrambling right and right scraping right for no, shit. No, 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 no. That was you. Scrambling. <laughs> you said, you said, what? You said, I like when you do it like that, Daddy. <laughs> when you scrambling and scraping for shit. <laughs> hey, man. <laughs> like, I don't know what I was talking about. Hey. Nah, nah, I mean, I you was You don't caught, go back no, and no, look no. at that stuff and laugh? I mean, it's, I mean, it, it could be funny. I don't really be on it like that. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. like. <laughs> I'm you sure know, we can put Charlemagne's I mean, compilation against Diddy's compilation. We have a bunch. We put Charlemagne. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I, I also, I also don't do it because I know I'm, I know I'm bad at the game. Right. <laughs> 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 I know I say like reckless stuff out my mouth that's just not maybe you know adding up to with somebody who maybe somebody who's homophobic, but I'm not homophobic and I really don't you know care. You know what I'm saying? I just. But um, I'm bad at the game, and it's probably hilarious. I would love to see it. I would love to see the video compilation. It's hilarious. 50, yeah. 50 came up here, and he was giving you flack for the asking Fab the party. So you, he'll ask you, oh, he'll ask you to play it, play it, play the clip, man. Yeah, play the clip. Go ahead. Why won't you party with me for your birthday, man? I, yeah, we, we partied for my birthday before. You came to my party. And, and... No, but me and you ain't never really party, you know what I'm saying? I asked 50 about that, and he said you did the same thing to him. You asked him to take him shopping. Yeah, I thought he needed some clothes. <laughs> <laughs> what? I'm a nice guy. Yo, why, mean, why are you just, and Fib just... Hey, yo. Why are y'all not... Hey, yo, I don't have no beef. 
with, 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 I, with, I don't know why. With, with Fifth, he loves me. Hmm. He loves me. Do y'all really can't have see a beef? It? I mean, y'all can't see no, it. No, we can't see it. Y'all can't see that he loves me? But see, you really, hold on, you really think that's hate? You really, when you really break it down, you've been out here a long time. You know he loves me. I don't think he like it. You know he loves me. I don't think he like it. Okay. But why? But why not? Y'all just y'all both passionate. Y'all both. I don't know. I, I, yo, check this out. I don't. I don't know. Like I don't. Both the same. No, we are not. Okay. We, we are not the same. <laughs> but I mean, we are not cut the from the same cloth. Work, work hard. Yeah, and 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 um, you know, I mean, I respect that. I don't. I don't never hit him with no, you know, nothing. I don't even think of no other man, man. Besides, if I'm thinking about another man, I'm thinking about uplifting. I'm not thinking about all that. All them nats. You know they they can't really touch me, y'all. At the end of the day, y'all see and y'all know what it is. Mm -hmm. You know the the track record. Y'all y'all know the business acumen. Y'all know the community service. Y'all know what I'm about. You know, and um, when he does that, it's 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 like funny to me. I don't really take it personal. I know he has a different sense of humor, and he's just not in my life. We don't have to never cross paths, and um, I will never say nothing negative about him. You know, because that's just not me. It feels like something must have happened though, like that we just don't know about behind the scenes. He loves me. That maybe a situation, a deal went bad. Nah, some, I don't know some, what it is. Sometimes, um, sometimes people that, that that feel like they don't like you and they act like that, they really love you. Like I'm not, I'm not, I'm not like you know just saying it to say you know. But I, guess I mean, like I mean, it's, some, it's it's something about me that has them on me all the time, and I'm not going nowhere. Cause you missed this. Sh Meek Mills. Well, he said a Philly rapper. You understand? And it was retracted, redacted in the paperwork to that. Because first of all, it had Meek Mills, it had Stevie J. They had redacted their names and they had Usher and they redacted their names and just said, a performer of the Super Bowl and a Philly rapper. Everybody kind of knew back in the day that Meek Mills and Puff was a little too friendly. Anytime two rappers or two people in the industry come dressed up alike on more than one occasion, they, my man, listen here, man. My dudes in Philly, I got some real strong dudes in Philly. They don't play that shit. And they probably embarrassed for the fact to see that Meek Mills, one of the street guys that came out of there, got caught up in this holly weird sh This holly weird sh where is that he's dressing like, he dressing the same sh He dressing like Diddy? Hugged up with Diddy? I think that Lil Rod know a lot of sh but I know this. Two men dress alike. It's just like two men laying down. When they both get up, <laughs> they both homos. <laughs> and that's real talk, bro. My man, you come to, you go to a party, dog. And the nigga got the same shirt you got on. I'm taking my shirt off. I'm walking around in a t-shirt. And then, not to blow Meek Mills up out the water or anything like that, it was said that they checked his Google search and all the other shit, and he was searching for some online gay porn and all that other shit like that. Oh, wow. That shit is crazy, bro. But listen, those are, those are what, you know, it's crazy that money, that lifestyle, and you trying to fit into something get you. These guys never set out to do all this shit. Meek Mills, when he got into the game, he didn't set out to be uh, uh, questioned about his manhood with Diddy. But he put that self, himself in that position.
the nigga Puff was like, yeah, like first he was amping him to, to right. get stout. Then he was like, yo, he's like, yo, so yo, when we gonna get the chance to, you know, to kick it, like we could just hang out, nigga. We gotta, we gotta Hold kick that. it. This is Puff. Okay. He telling me we gotta kick it and shit. And he was like, right. yo, why don't we like go shopping or some shit? I mean, like I pay for it. And I was like, what the fuck this nigga just say? <laughs> <laughs> I got the fuck away from him because I was like, this, this nigga, like, fuck it. Wait, this nigga just tell me he'd take me shopping. <laughs> and this is, shit, this is shit that goes on. But this is a little fruit pop. It's a fruit pop. It's a fruit pop, trust me. You see these little weird ass pictures and shit like that out there? I'm just sitting out there for no reason. Yo, if you don't see accident pictures, you'll be like kissing it. Like that doesn't happen by accident. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Look, look. Later, you're going to find out a little shit that I'll be saying. Oh, <laughs> You understand what I'm saying? Chill. Man, listen, I'm trying to tell you the truth. But Yo. the truth, sometimes it hurts. Right. It hurts people and they don't want to hear that shit. But right. I'm trying to tell you, nah. nigga asked me, could he take me shopping? And it fucked me up because I'm looking like, what the fuck did this nigga just say? Like, I want to take you shopping. I got a bankroll out this motherfucker. I want to take you shopping. Why? Because when you walk around looking so motherfucking good, I want to feel like, God damn it, that motherfucker with me. That's all I want to do. That's all I want to do. But when a nigga tell me he want to take me shopping, what the fuck is the matter with this nigga? Wait, hold on. Well, where was this at? This was at the wedding. Oh, no. No, it's right I'm beefing with Steve Stout. Stout and Puff is telling Stout. you he's going to take you shopping. After the shoes. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Everybody going to want to be at Chris Lady wedding right now. Everybody going to be like, yo, what's there? Why? And I'm bugging because look, why they were sitting there at the wedding. Like, I'm like this, look, because you know they both, they hit. Right. Both Stout and Puff. Okay, yes, they hit. They fucked the Veronica, the girl that Chris was married. Whoa, this oh. is awkward. Whoa. We did not know that. So I'm Chill, sitting there like, what the fuck kind of shit we got going on? Oh, man. Like, goddamn. Like, my own my own. I thought it's our, our angel on our chairs. I know, you were supposed to jump in. Like, like, like chill. I, I was going to follow the sun. God, I'm still going to follow It is what it is now. You gave me alcohol. Same time, Damn, so I didn't know I'm that. sitting there looking, going like, "What the fuck is okay? Okay, maybe this is one of those things where because I'm from the neighborhood, I don't understand what's really going on, right?" And it was just yeah. his own little thing. Like Chris didn't give a fuck. I guess it was have everybody here so they know I'm secure and I don't care about none of that shit. And everything's <laughs> like, and I'm going through my own little feelings. All right. You know what I'm saying? Because I don't know how that works. Right. You know what I'm saying? But um, it is what it is. Like, that's right. what happened. And it was like, I'm sitting there, I'm like, I was her get that. And I was a tight. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Like, executive type. Like, <laughs> you want to tell me you went to school, shit like that. You better off telling me you got no gag reflex. Yes. I'm going to turn it serious. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I'm bringing that up a good idea. <laughs> so, um, I'm going to bring it serious. One question, and we're going we gonna to move on from All this. Right. But... Uh, Chris basically managed you your whole career. Yeah. Chris managed me basically my whole career. I'm sorry to ask this question, but we're going to uh -huh. ask this question. Do you think he um, committed suicide? No, nah, I don't believe that. So, I don't believe he killed himself. So, so I don't believe, because you hired an investigator? Yeah, I true? hired investigators for okay. it because I, I didn't believe, like, for Tiffany. For the daughter, daughter, the daughter. daughter. Yeah. I, I did that, you know what I'm saying, because her and her... her his mother and his family, his brothers and them didn't believe in that, so I paid for it. But the, um... But you personally, what do you believe? Not, like, I spoke to him right before... The day? The, yeah, yeah. The same day or the, the day before you The said? night before, like, it was like a, uh... He was still under the weather. Like, he was still under the weather because he was, he was... Went to the doctor and came out and he was, like, talking real low and shit, and I was getting my hair cut. Right. And we was talking on the, uh... On the, uh... FaceTime shit, so right. you don't have to... Right. It's long distance. I was in Germany at the, um... Their, their uh, consumer electronics co convention. All right. So um, when I'm talking to him, he's like, "Yeah, yeah, real soft spoken," because he, you know, he's not feeling good. Right. And then Shorty came in and said, "You on the phone?" Blah, blah, blah. She was real mad, like, "What the fuck?" And I was like, <laughs> "Like we laughed at what was going on." And I and after he said, "Yo, I call, I call you back. I call you back." Uh. Because he was just out of it, like he was sick, so he couldn't. The fuck you on the phone? Da da. She went out there, and I was like, 
damn. And it was it was funny to us because we didn't really. At that point, he wasn't going. Right. You know what I'm saying? It was just something to laugh at. Like, he just got some shit going on at the house. Right. Then later you look at it and you go, wait, this shit don't feel right. Because the nigga, he didn't have the energy at that point to reciprocate. Or to so, fight. So, so you think you think that, that she had it, had it done? I don't know. I don't know. I won't, I won't put that on nobody. Yeah, don't put saying? that but, on nobody. But, but I, I, I don't... Um, but what do you I don't think? believe he just knocked himself off like that. I can't believe that neither. Yeah. I'm sorry. Like, like I know this is a touching point for both of us. Yeah. But I look at you face to face, nah, man I mean, to man. Let I, me tell you something. I, I don't believe that to, neither. When they try to like, say, but are we in denial? Like, like let's just no, keep it real. No, are we no, in, no, like, no. Like, no. Like, I, you you no, in denial no. with your pettiness. Listen, but I know that. <laughs> but but what I'm, I'm saying is, denial. are we me and you? Because I'm with you on this 100. percent are we in denial? Because no. I did hear like some funny stories one night. I, I just hung out somewhere, uh-huh. and we, it was actually me and my wife. I don't want to blow up who I talk to. Look at this, look. <clears throat> all the funny stories and all that shit I heard, everything you can think of, I heard. I know. I, you, you had know to what hear saying? what I heard. Now, what, you what, had to hear. what's happening is, when they start to say it's because he was having financial problems. Right, yeah, please. Let's make this clear. As, look, he lost money with Bernie Madoff. Mm. Right? Word. Makes sense. When he lost the money, I come in the office, I'm laughing at him, right? Because I'm like, oh, so you found a nigga, give you 33% of charge on that, didn't even say nothing about that, huh? Oh. My nigga. Yeah. So you oh. forgot to tell a nigga that you found a nigga like that that could give you that kind of money on return. You ain't cut me in at all on the deal, oh. huh? I'm glad the motherfucker lost the money. So I'm laughing at you. Y'all just made, so y'all just made a hundred million. Let's make some noise right. for that. I'm y'all just made a hundred million with vitamin water. God damn it. I'm looking at him going, why you ain't tell me Cut you into that it. you found somebody yeah. that could show you those returns on the money? Mm. And that's it, because Bernie was showing the returns up until yeah. he not showing the returns. It was like a hold on, hold on. You met Bernie yeah. Madoff? So he was doing it, huh? You met Bernie Madoff? No, Mano? this is what Chris, Chris had already... I keep going. Brother. This is the story. So, crazy. so now I'm going, yo, how you, how you missed that one? How you ain't tell me about 